Okay. Here we are with this, uh, the movement from a German wall clock. This is from a Master. clock, probably from the 20s or 30s. I have the hands off right now and also the snail and hour hand there. It's a time and strike movement. Uh, so we've got two mainsprings that we can wind, one for running the time side and one for running the strike side. Some clocks will have a third for running the chimes. That's like church bells, kind of. Um, you can see in here, the mainspring runs a great wheel that's attached, and then up the going train to the escape wheel. And the escape wheel is there to make sure that the power is released slowly at a particular beat. Uh, and then the beat is determined by the pendulum, which is not attached right now but would attach through this crutch uh, so that they move together. Here we've got three hammers on two posts. So um, we're going to get a bim bam strike there. And we can see these posts have little springs on them so that they're pushed back into place. And they also have those levers sticking out that are going to catch on that star-shaped wheel in there. Oh, I started. I started something. There it goes. Yeah, so the time and strike interact here on the front. Um, we've got the dial train here. Takes the one hour rotation of the minute hand, uh, converts it and has an hour hand just sort of loose on top there that runs at a different speed. And that's attached to this snail cam. You can see why it's called a snail cam there. Uh, and the snail cam uh, controls how far the rack is able to fall when it falls. So there, that's the two o'clock strike. Only exposes two of the teeth. Um, but let's take that off for a second and just look at how this works. So here we can see the center cam, which has two points coming out, one for the hour strike and one for the half hour strike. Again, this is rotating once per hour, so that's going to give us those strikes on time. Um, and then resting against that is the lifting lever. And resting against the list lifting lever, we have the rack hook. Uh, that right now, the rack hook is holding the rack in place so that it can't drop. And it's also holding, it's in this little notch in the gathering pallet. The gathering pallet is that little bean-shaped cam with a pin sticking out and a notch. Uh, and right now, the time train wants to move, but that notch is catching it and holding it in place. Um, up here is a warning wheel, which also has a little pin sticking out of it, if you can see that. And that's going to become important too. So, when it's time for a strike, the lifting lever is going to get lifted up. Let's drop this out of the way. The lifting lever also has this piece up here sticking through. And when we lift that up, it can catch that little pin. See it catching in there? And also stop the strike from going. So we've got two ways to stop the strike from going. One is down here with the hook holding it, holding the gathering pallet. And one is back in there with the lifting lever holding the warning wheel. So when we do bring this around, this is going to be the half hour strike. We first lift our hook out of the notch, but you can see it only ran about a quarter of a turn there before the lifting lever caught the pin in the back, so we still didn't allow it to run. This is called warning, uh, and it happens a few minutes before the strike. And then if we keep going, 
we let that lifting lever fall, and now everything can run. Now it only ran once because uh, it fell into the little notch again. Uh, if we do this for the hour, I'm gonna have to Clearly I don't have the hand on right there. But now we can see how the gathering palette walks along all the teeth that are exposed. And the hook isn't able to fall into that notch until it gets to the end. And here we can see the star cam pushing those levers, bim, bam. And once it gets to the end, once the hook gets to the end of the rack, we're paused again. Um, so to set this up correctly, I'm going to take it to just using the minute hand here as a wrench, kind of. Uh, it's safe to move your hands forward on a striking clock. It's not safe to move them backwards, so keep that in mind. We're going to go to right after it drops. We'll just speed that along. So we've set it up so that the lifting lever has just dropped for a strike. We're going to make sure that it drops at the start of an hour. I think that should do it. Yep. So now that's dropping on the one o'clock of the snail up there at the top, if we let it. And we get a single strike. So we can put this on at the top of the hour and watch it go here. So somewhere here, yep, we're in warning because we can see that the hook is no longer holding the gathering pallet. And then to get this angle. Do that again on the two o'clock hour. You can see here the snail cam has moved so that that rack will now drop on the two o'clock notch. Okay, we're in warning. The rack falls and then we can count it. I'm going to do that one more time here. While we go, let's see. Okay, we're starting to lift into warning. There it goes. We're in warning. The warning wheel is held by the lifting lever and the rack is still held there. Now we drop the rack. We can see it dropped a little bit farther because uh, on the snail cam, it fell onto the three o'clock. And there, there it is running, that gathering pallet walking along the rack for three strikes. So that's how a movement works for a striking clock with a rack and snail. Uh, thanks for joining me.